Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Anime Orange, where I usually bring you builds of 3D metal models and how I do them. But today, I'm doing a bit of a health update. It's been a while. I've been doing this YouTube channel, this particular channel, because I've actually have a couple of others that are pretty much abandoned at this point. But this channel I've been doing for three or four years now, and for the past three years at least, I've pretty much focused on Metal Earth models and similar 3D metal models, but there was a sort of a hiatus there for a while, almost a year ago, because I got a heart transplant, and I've made an update video about that. You've probably seen it. And I thought, okay, it's been a while, maybe I'll make another update about how things are going now. So that's what this is. This is an update video about me, about my health and, and how things are going. And the channel is still going. I'm still doing the best I can to build and share new models with you and, and how I build them and, and try to help out. I never can move as fast as I'd like to. There's so many out there that I haven't built that I want to get to and they keep adding more, but I just keep doing the best I can and keep trying. And I said I focus mostly on Metal Earth and I have. There are plenty of other models out there. Peace Cool, Tenyo, uh, MU, uh, Picture Kingdom, so on and so forth. And I've dabbed a little here and there, but I'd like to do more someday have something very big coming but anyway this is about me and my health and well things are doing pretty good since the last update um i know one of the things that i mentioned is that i'm having to build my strength back up again because well i lost a lot of it you become more and more sedentary or i became more and more sedentary as the heart failure got worse and then being stuck in the hospital with tubes running out of both sides of me in all different areas and just being stuck in bed I got to the point where I couldn't get myself out well I'm doing a lot better now Think, thankfully to say I uh, struggled you know I tried to get out and I tried to do I certainly had more energy to do stuff as far as the heart was concerned and did a lot did a lot more around the house and was more active but I still had limitations I was still healing and that you know, subtracts from what you can do. Uh, I still had the kidney failure. That did not get better, unfortunately. I'm still in kidney failure. I still need kidneys, so I'm working on getting on the kidney transplant list. I'm very close. I uh, basically have to get some issues taken care of with the teeth that have developed over time. And once I do that and get clearance, then I can get on that list. But the kidney failure has its own limitations, especially being on hemodialysis where they stick a couple of needles in you or have an access port, pull your blood out, filter it, and put it back in. And that really drains you, and that limited me as far as what I could do, because after hemo, you just tend to be tired and wiped out. And on top of that, for the first six months post-transplant, the medicine I was on, the, the anti-rejection meds, the cell sept and the tacro, the levels were higher and they drain you too and they mess with your digestive tract and you know there are certainly side effects one of the pharmacists or the pharmacist at the transplant clinic basically told me if it wasn't for the benefit of keeping organs from rejecting there's no way that these medicines would be approved for human use because the side effects are sometimes damaging i.e. kidney failure uh, they can cause that. That's not necessarily to say that's what caused mine. Just the simple fact that they were getting starved before the heart failed and the uh, long surgery probably did them in. But those things limited me, but I still got up and did the best I could. Uh, my son walks to school. I could drive him. I frequently let him walk. It's uh, 0.9 miles. They don't, you know, we live in the city, so being that close, they don't bus you. And I did my best to walk with him when I could, not that he needed it. At first he did, once he got used to it, he didn't really, but I did it to get exercise. So about a month ago, I switched from hemodialysis to peritoneal dialysis, where instead of using your blood and pulling it out and filtering it, they use your peritoneal cavity, which is down in your stomach area, and they, they surgically implant uh, a lead, a doodad in there that, that allows you to hook up to a bag of solution and fill your cavity, per peritoneal cavity, with this solution that pulls out the toxin, pulls out extra fluid, you let it sit there and dwell for a while, and then you drain it out. 
and you can do this several times manually during the day or you can do the nighttime version which is what I'm doing where you hook up to a machine at night there's a couple of bags you hook up to the machine hook up to the little tube which is in the <clears throat> in my stomach area and go to sleep and it fills and drains and fills and drains several times through the night and that's going well for me um, one of the big advantages most people who do PD or peritoneal dialysis have more energy because it's not draining your blood and, and, and draining just draining zapping you dry in one day because with hemo you do it two, every two to three days so your toxins build up your extra fluid builds up and then you go quickly within a matter of three to four hours pull it all out and it shocks you it, it, it affects you the peritoneal is done every day constantly so you stay at a more stay more level you don't have that build up and shock of removal build up and shock of removal you don't lose the blood so it's not as hard on you know you with hemo you are losing a little bit of blood every time they try not to but there's only so much they can do it's just it's less of a shock to your system it's easier and I've definitely noticed an increase in energy I've been walking more I was before going to home hemo I would walk my son to school, I'd walk home, and that's about all I can manage. I may walk a little bit later in the day if I felt up to it. Now, I'm walking him to school, and I basically have a good day, and I keep going. And I walk, I walked a block or two past it. I walked around the block and came back two streets over. I walked two or three more blocks the next day, another block extra the next day to the point where I was walking two to three miles some days after walking him to school. Or, you know, in the process of walking into school and beyond, I'd walk two miles, maybe three miles. I'm doing that most every day. Spring break was last week, so I didn't walk as much. But I'm trying to keep it up. Walk around the neighborhood, exploring the neighborhood, walk in different directions, coming back on different streets. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the walking. It's still cold out. I live in the north. We actually had snow today. It's spring. It's April. We had snow. But whatever, I you know, wasn't deep enough to need boots. I still walked him to school. I still walked several blocks past his school, two blocks the other direction, came back, explored a new neighborhood, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm getting the exercise and my weight's staying the same. With the peritoneal, you find a little bit more with keeping your protein and potassium levels up, which is different than hemo, but so far not too bad. I'm managing and I've got more energy and that's great. And I have more time at home because I'm not having to go to a center three nights a week. I'm not burning up gas. So that's saving me money. So I'm, I'm for overall really enjoying it. It's more responsibility and you're stuck in your room at night. But, you know, and I was really worried because I don't always sleep through the night. I was really worried that that was going to suck. But I've been doing okay. been managing. It hasn't made a big impact. And I'm, I'm managing the responsibility okay and, and, and having to hook up and change bags and keep clean. And so far, so good. So I'm enjoying it, um, the difference anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying life more and having more energy to get out and do. And that's wonderful, doing more around the house, doing more walking, being more active, being a little bit more of my old self. Because I, I learned, you know, you, you get older, you learn to calm down. Uh, me, I think more so than usual because I didn't have the energy to do stuff. So I learned to become more sedentary and more paced and more relaxed because I didn't have a choice. And a little bit of the old mischievous me is coming out, which is good and bad. But yeah, things are going better. Uh, still fighting with the kidney issue, but, you know, having kidney failure, and I really do not mean this to put down anybody in kidney failure because it is a serious thing. And, and even though I am in kidney failure, I don't feel like it's that bad. They are still functioning to some degree. I'm not having issues with maintaining my phosphorus, which is a big issue for people on uh, dialysis. The, the fluid level restrictions are, right now I don't really have any on the PD because it does a really good job of pulling the fluid out and keeping it from building up in between sessions because sessions are every day. So there's, there's less of a limit, and I'm having an easy time with it. Uh, but it is a serious condition. But what I'm going through personally, having the kidney failure, is nothing compared to the heart failure. Now as time goes on, it is entirely possible that my kidneys will get worse and I won't continue to be as lucky. Uh, I'm thankful for the time, for the function that I do have and that my diet is not 
particularly restricted at this time, especially after going through many years of heart failure and a restricted diet. Having to deal with that, I'm enjoying being able to eat more. Now, that's not to say I'm going hog wild. I still am conscious of phosphorus foods and, and trying to keep them at a minimum, but I'm still enjoying some things that I know other people with worse failure would not be able to. So, trying to enjoy with moderation while I still can. And just very thankful that I have the function that I have and that I have so much more energy now than I did before. I will say that it has been a learning process I was reading today about a denerved heart, which is basically what I have. Anybody with a heart transplant has a denerved heart, and what that means is the nerve connection between the central nervous system and the heart is severed because it's not the original, and you don't so easily reattach nerves. They just maybe grow back on their own, but probably not. I'm not completely certain, but. The normal signal that the body, the nervous system would give the heart saying, hey, I'm up and active now, start beating a little faster, it's gone. The heart doesn't get that signal. So it doesn't know to speed up right away when I become more active. The only thing that tells it it's time to speed up is adrenaline and, and other hormones in the system which don't kick in right away. So I can't just sprint out the front door and go running. I can't just take several flights of stairs all of a sudden. I have to kind of ease into it and give my, my body a chance to release whatever hormones are necessary to get the heart to speed up to keep up with the activity. I can't just go from zero to well, let's go. So I, I've actually tried to do a little bit of running and it, it, it doesn't last long. I have to, I've learned that I have to walk and warm myself up and, and as things get moving then I can do more. And consequently, in the flip side, once I'm done and sit down, there's no direct nervous connection to tell my heart, okay, we're resting, you can start to calm down. My heart will continue to beat at a faster rate for some time after resting, and it takes it a while to scale back down because it doesn't have that direct connection to know what's going on in the rest of the body. So that's something I have to deal with. I have to be more careful about how I exercise, and, and I do love running up the steps and love that I have the energy to do that. And the strength of my legs have greatly improved because steps are not a physical problem for me anymore. I can't really do two flights running because then I'll get really lightheaded. <laughs> because my heart's not learned, my heart hasn't yet figured out. Speed up, he's running up steps. There's no direct connection. So that's a bit of a learning process, but you know, it, it could be so much worse. And I'm so thankful for what I do have. Uh, another thing, oddly enough, having this heart condition and having this failure. I honestly haven't held a solid job in years. I've been on disability for years and that has afforded me the time when I felt up to it to do these models and make these videos because I really needed to keep myself some sort of active and this gave me an excuse to do so and I've enjoyed the models and it's not building the models is not physically demanding it's something I can do at a desk. Now setting up the video equipment and lighting sometimes got to be a bit challenging and slowed me down and the fact that I'm doing all this recording and building in the basement and my computer that I edit on is on the second floor which is two flights of stairs I had to really plan out my day as far as going up and down the stairs before now it's not such a big deal but I do for a long time there spend a lot more time with doctor's appointments and still have a fair amount so that is like almost a part-time job right there but anyway that that's a whole other story Fortunately, I have the free time to do this now, but there will come a point where it's time for me to go back and work full time and support myself. Not that I mind that. I enjoy, well, I look forward to the idea of supporting myself for a change and, and, and being productive and working. Although, having been in heart failure for 18 years and not really was diagnosed at 22, uh, I did some college. I never finished. I never really had a career. Uh, I never really set a solid path for myself before getting into heart failure. So now I'm 41 years old and coming up on the verge of going back into the working world and that's a little bit daunting. 40 some years old and haven't worked in 10-15 years and got to find a job and, and, and not to say I don't have any skills but no, no set career skills. So that's a lot I've got to get sorted out over the next few months. And, and there will come a time where these videos will become less and less because I'll be busy doing other things in life. But for right now, I still have the time 
for the most part and still keep building these videos building these models and making these videos and doing the best i can so as far as the heart's concerned i have later this month another checkup with the heart transplant team i've got to go have another right heart cath where they most like usually go in through my neck check the pressures inside of my heart and uh, pull three little biopsies out three little pieces of heart tissue out to make sure there's no rejection so far everyone has come back no rejection or one R mild, which is a very mild rejection, but it's normal. It's actually where they want you to be. It shows that there is some uh, activity as far as white blood cells and whatnot. They're doing, they're, they're, they're out there. I still have an immune system, but it's not attacking my heart. So I'm, I'm where they want me to be. Everything is good. There's no damage to my heart, no serious rejection. Hopefully that continues. I go later this month to have another biopsy to check and make sure that that is still the case and as long as things are good things stay the way they are if things are not good then well you know I could be end up in the hospital I could definitely end up increasing some meds and try to get things under control we'll cross that bridge if we get to it if I get to it uh, basically you get the transplant once a week for a month and then it's every two weeks for um, I think another month and then it goes to once a month for six months and then every other month for the next six months and then once you hit a year it goes to every four months for three years so I've got this one and then two months later I'll this this is ten ten months so I'm ten months out as of this month I'll get my biopsy this month and then again in two months which will be my one year anniversary and that is a big appointment because they do a more intense biopsy and more tests and procedures to make sure everything is looking good and 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 progressing good and the all clear and I don't I don't know when I'll have to do a serious one like that again, but it goes to every four months biopsy and the appointments just spread out and things are good. So we're, I'm starting to get to that period where things are calming down and the appointments are less and less and there's, you know, I'm settled into what's going on and managing and things are becoming back to normal. So that's how things are going right now and I will leave it at that. If you like this uh, update video, health update video, let me know down below if you want to see more of them. If not, if you'd rather not see this and just keep to the build videos, mention that in the comments as well. As always, thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.